we were thinking it was a long-term investment, that there would come a time we would not have to continue to use all these expensive inputs. We thought our, our, our phosphorus and our potash and our you know, sulfur primarily were gonna build up to the point that we were home free. And we found out that was just, Fallacy. just not the case. We are Cooper and Katie Hurst, and we own Hunt Hill Cattle Company in Woodville, Mississippi. Bought property in 1990, and it was about, you know, a large percentage of it was timber, and the rest of it was pasture. And uh, this land is either good for timber or cattle. We were young and semi-broke, and we said we had we got we got to find some revenue streams, uh, and so we uh, we just immersed ourselves in the cattle business. Even when we were you know quite small in our cattle operation, we you know we we knew we had to be able to measure no matter how many cows we had. So we complete P and L and balance sheet, and we knew where every penny went. And Katie did a great job with all that kind of uh, documentation and everything was computerized. So uh, thinking back about, you know, we used a lot of fertilizer early on. Uh, I mean, it was very, very cheap, you know, and prim primarily nitrogen uh, phosphate and potassium and maybe a little sulfur, maybe some lime. That's, that was your, your traditional recommendations. And, uh, you know, we, we knew grass was the cheapest way to feed a cow. And we thought using the synthetic input, synthetic commercial fertilizers was the way to create fertility. And after thousands and thousands of dollars and, 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 and a lot of time, we found out that in our case, nothing could have been further from the truth. Probably about 2009, 2010, we quit, we, we quit, we quit nitrogen and, and we had spent a fortune. We started reading and, you know, learning a lot about, you know, higher density grazing, you know, slash mob grazing. And, and uh, again, we, we read a lot about it, talked to a lot of people, and went and visited a couple of branches, and, and then we dove into it. No doubt we started seeing progress when we started adaptive grazing. I mean, we, we, we increased our paddocks exponentially and we actually started in a drought for us. You know, we were really, really dry and you know, how do, how do you trample forage <laughs> when you don't have much to trample? But we, you know, we split up these pastures and just moved the cattle fast. And by the time we came back around, lo and behold, we were growing more grass and with very, very little water. And then you start seeing, you start seeing forages come that you never planted. Uh, and that was something we were told. And, 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 and so that was an aha moment. That's one of these plants that was the seeds that were planted in, in the 50s, my agronomist told me. And uh, that's a legume that just came with this intensive grazing. So in the latent seed bank that we, you know, we didn't plant it, but it's... And that's a very, very valuable forage. You know, we were making progress and we fell into a meeting that, that they talked about the principles of soil health. We were already doing a couple of them just in our regular management plan, so it really wasn't hard to us. And we didn't think, okay, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna follow Regen Fag. It's just developed and and we've seen it work and seen it just grow and grow and it's a process. You just have to, to look at it and build on it and change it and as a, that's why it's called adaptive, I guess. You know, every day we wake up, how can we be how better? How can we do it better? Well, don't, I don't know any other way in any business I've ever been in, you know. We're very good observers, you know. We're not vets, we're not microbiologists, and we're not soil scientists, and we're not agronomists, but we're pretty dead gum observant. And, and it seems like the more we work with nature and the more we follow this regenerative path, the less money we spend and the better the cattle life. <laughs>